Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my series on using Orca Slicer. Today we're taking a look at the various configuration tests you can do with Orca Slicer, and we're going to test those and set them up for my printers. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I have Orca Slicer loaded, and I want to start configuring my printers. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to run these configurations on two different printers. One is an Ender 3 V2 Neo running Clipper, and the other is a Creality CR6SE running Marvel. So that way we can compare if there's any differences on how we configure for these two machines. So let's start taking a look. Now, with Work a slicer open. I just click on calibration. And the first test here is for the temperature tower. When I open the temperature tests, I'm presented with how I want to do my temperature tower. I'm just going to select PLA and I'm going to leave it as these default values. If I click OK, a temperature tower is then generated and placed on the printer bed. And then based on this, I can go ahead and slice it and print it and take a look at the results and decide what is the best print temperature I should use for PLA. So I've gone ahead and printed out the results and let's take a look. So here are my two temperature towers. This is the temperature tower for the CR6. Here is the temperature tower for the Ender 3 B2 Neo running Clipper. Now, basically what I want to do is I'm looking at these temperatures, I'm looking for the set of print areas. It starts at 230, goes up to 190, and you can see the text right here. And I'm just looking for what has the least stringing and basically looks the best. In both cases, I think the best looking temperature is probably around the two, 205 to 200 mark right in here, which is about what I normally use. Now your printer may have different results. If you look at this one in particular, you notice the higher temperatures, it's very strung out. The, the prints just don't look very good. And even up to 215, same problem. This one's not quite as bad. Again, the good temperatures appear to be between 200 and 205. So that's good. So we'll leave our temperatures, or let me check my settings. So let's go back over to our slicer. So I'm back over to the slicer, looking at the Creality CR6 profile going to click on the filament and notice when I scroll down here, I actually have it set to 230, 230. So we're going to go ahead and change that to 205. And let's save that. Close that. And let's switch printers over to the Ender 3 B2 Neo. Again, let's open up that filament. And I have the first layer at 210, that's okay, and the other layers at 205. So I think that's okay. Let's leave that as is. So again, I've just run that temperature test. Now I should point out that this model with all these various temperatures takes about two hours to print. So it is not speedy. The next, after I've done that temperature test, let's look at the next set of tests, flow rate. So let's set our flow rate here and let's take a look at this set of results. As you can see, this test has put some blocks up on the screen. These blocks represent different flow rates. And if I look really closely, you'll see that negative 10, negative 15, negative 20. So you have five. 10, 15, 20, then zero, and then five, positive five, 10, 15, 20. And so it's going to use these values. I'm going to print these out and then take a look and try to determine which one's the best quality and the smoothest surface. So let's go ahead and do this for the Neo. 
So I'll just slice this plate. It's telling me it'll take 53 minutes. So that, that is going to take a little bit of time. And let me save that. And then let's go over to the CR6 standard and slice that plate. And save that to my folder. And then we'll send those to the printer and give it a shot and see how those look. So I've gone ahead and printed my test pieces. And now I'm just reviewing them to see which surfaces look the best. I can pretty much eliminate the positive 20. That looks awful. Positive 15. More has issues up here where it says 15 as opposed to this surface. I actually like zero. And then I think negative five, one is both clearest. And if I run my finger across it, actually feels the smoothest. So either zero or negative five so far. Let's just look at these. Negative 20 looks a little choppy. 10, that feels a little rough. Five feels all right, so we'll put that there. And then we have negative 15, that again feels a little rough. I'm looking at positive five, and I'm noticing some issues down in this corner. So I'm going to put that aside. Let's look at zero and negative five. I think I'm going to go looking at this. I think. I think I'm going to go with negative five. That way we can see what it does. So on this is on my Ender 3 V2 Neo that's running Clipper. So let's go ahead and see how we have to make these changes to make this work. So on the screen here, I have the equation. So it's the old flow rate times 100 plus the modifier, which is the little plate, and then divide it by 100. So in my case, the old flow rate was one. So now I'm doing 100 minus 5 because I selected the minus 5 plate divided by 100. So the new flow rate is 0.95. I'm just going to go over here to work a slicer and put that number in. Now with that number in, I'm going to move forward with the pass 2. So we're going to do our second pass. Let me save this and let's go up here to pair and then calibrate flow rate S2. Zero through negative nine. Now let's just make sure that has my old flow rate. So now I'm going to print these and based on these, I'll then further dial in my flow rate. So let's send this to the printer, and then we'll look at these new plates and see how those go. Now I've started the print on my Ender 3 V2 Neo, and now I'm going to pull out all the plates for the CR6 running Marlin. I'm just arranging these on my desk so I can look through them. And Let's start looking through these. The 20 doesn't look bad. Doesn't feel like the smoothest though. And I'm just running my finger across these. Now I think zero. So I keep feeling these. I think zero and five feel the best. And so let's just go with zero on this one so we can see what this looks like uh, without changing anything. So let's go back over and look at my number. So we're going to take the old flow rate is 0.95. And this is 
oil rate, if I go back over here, I can see it's 0.95 on my CR6. We're just going to go 0.95. And I selected zero. So we're going to leave it at 0.95. But we'll leave it 0.95. And then let's go on and do the second pass and see if we can dial this in just a little bit further. I'm going to leave the flow rate as is. I'm going to go up here to calibration, flow rate, S2. Make sure that I'm on my CR6. Let's slice this. And we'll export it and send it to the printer. So I've printed the panels for my CR6. Now I'm going to point out it looks like negative three pulled up off the bed. That's not great. But I'm just going to walk through these and try to pick out which ones look and feel the smoothest. It really looks like three didn't look good anyway. Zero doesn't look that good. Negative nine doesn't look that good. And a four feels pretty good, so let's put that aside. Maybe negative five. If eight, put that aside. Negative two, negative one feels good. I think I'm going to go negative four. Negative four feels about the best. So let's figure out how we're going to have to do the math on this. I'm starting with 0.95, which is what I already have, negative four. And so we now believe that the flow rate should be 0.912. So let's plug that in. We'll go back over our slicer. And I'm just going to hit edit here on filament. And we're going to go 0.912. Back to make sure I did that number right, didn't reverse it. I'm going to hit save. And that's it. We now have the flow rate for the CR6. Let's switch over to the Neo. And we'll take a look at that. So I have my panels printed out from the Ender 3V2 Neo. I'm just running my finger across them. These actually look like they're printed much better. Let's find number one. I'm just rubbing my finger across them. I actually think negative two feels the best here. So we're going to go with negative two. And let's switch back over to our display. And go over here, but negative two. And so we're looking at 0.931. So if I hit the edit button here for filament, so we're doing. 0.931. So now I've successfully changed the flow ratio and the flow rate for both of these printers. So that was pretty simple. So let's go ahead and move over to the next calibration test, which is going to be the pressure advance. So I have both my towers printed. And I've gone around and tried to identify the best corner I think I have right here. So what I'm going to do is measure from the bottom. Of course, do this actually in centimeters. That would help. So that's 21, 20, 23 centimeters. Go around here. Find another corner. It's about 22 to 23. I'm going to say 22. So 22 centimeters. So let's go over and do some maths. So what I'm doing is for a direct drive, I do 0 0.002. And then 
multiply that by the millimeters I found. In my case, that's 0.044. So let's go back over and go to my Ender 3 V2 Neo, and let's go in through here. Let's enable pressure advance and 0 0.044. So I have that in there, and then let, let's save it. So then we'll switch over and do the same thing on my CR6SE. So I've switched over to my Creality CR6SE. And let me do some measurements here, see what exactly we have. So I'm just measuring here where I think it looks the best. And I'm saying that's about 40 millimeters. Go around the side here. Again, yeah, 40 millimeters looks like it's about where it looks the best. And that printer is not direct drive. Let's go back over to my calculations and we're going to sum over to my calculations. Let's just fix this equation. We want this equal to the Bowden tube and it's going to be 40 millimeters. So we're showing the pressure advance should be at 0.8. So let's go back here, hit edit, enable pressure advance, and we're going to go 0.8. We have that. Let's save. And we'll go ahead on to the next test. Okay, so on my next test, go up here to hit calibration. And let's hit the retraction test. And we're going to start with a retraction of zero and retraction of two millimeters. And the step is going to be 0.1. So we'll hit OK. And that generates me a little tower. And I'm going to. Make sure this has an outer brim. I'm going to slice and send this to my printer. Now I'm doing the same process for my Ender 3 V2 Neo, and I'm going to change the brim type to outer brim only just to get it some more stability. Again, slice it. This only takes seven minutes, so this should be a pretty quick print. I'll export it out. Save it. And then I'm going to send it to my printer. And I'll come back in a couple minutes and we'll take a look. I made a mistake here, so I'm going to go back and correct it. For my Bowden tube on my CR6SE, I want this set between 1 and 6. And then let's do a 0.2 step. So that'll actually generate a taller tower which will take a couple more minutes to generate, which is about double, so about 18 minutes. So I'll send that, and then we'll see how that goes. So here is the retraction tower that printed for the CR6SE. And if you notice, there's one area, and that's 1.8 millimeters from the bottom. I started at one, so I'm going to add that together. So that's 2.8 millimeters. So we're going to go over to Orca Slicer. I'm going to edit the filament and go to Settings Overrides and change the retraction length to 2.8. Hit Save. And then let's switch over to the Ender 3 V2 Neo. So I've just switched over to the Neo. I'm going to open up Again, the settings overrides and enable length for retraction. And then let's go back to my desk camera and make some measurements. So here's the tower for the 
Ender 3 V2neo. It looks like the only area there's not any stringing is right at the bottom. So we're just going to go with 0.2. Because again, that's right at the bottom. Or better yet, let's go with 0.4. We're going to go 1. Yeah, point, point 0.2 to point 0.4. I'll split the difference and go point 0.3. So let's go back over to Work Slicer and change that point array. So now I have the retraction set for both printers. And let's do the last basic test. The last basic test is the Orca tolerance test. So we'll Change this, let's slice it, and we'll send that to our printer. So that's for the Neo, and then let's do the same thing. I'll do the same thing for the CR6. So now for the CR6, I'm gonna go up to here, change it over to the CR6, the calibration, work a torture test, slice it. That'll take about 32 minutes, and we'll send it to the printer. So I've completed the final test, and I'll notice on the Ender 3 V2 Neo, it still actually looks a little stringy, so I might need to work on this more. Now, what they're recommending on the torture test is I take my M6X and check these holes. From the look of things, I get a decent fit on the 0.1 tolerance. 0.2, it's really good fit. 0.3. These pieces removed easily. And use those instead of the Allen wrench. 0.1 seems to be about the best fit. Let me look at the Reality CR6. Again, I'm seeing the same thing where point two, I'm getting a really good fit. Let's try with a little printed piece. With the printed piece, I'm actually able to slip that in all the way through on all these different ones, even on the bottom one. So, might need to work on the tolerance a little bit on the Ender 3 V2. As you can see, things seem to be working okay. I think I can live with tolerance being a little bit off. Because again, it, it, it's not that big a difference. But to give my final thoughts on Orca Slicer and calibration tests, I like all the calibration tests. I think it's super handy to have them in one place. The torture test and the test I don't like is the flow rate test that took way too long. The standard test is to print a cube with no top and two line widths, and then just measure the flow that way. That test, again, takes a couple minutes, as opposed to the test that I believe took about two hours to run, printing the little plates and looking at the flows. I much prefer that other method I wish they had that built in here. Otherwise, I really do like all the calibration tests. I'm probably going to continue to use Orca Slicer for a while to see how I like it. And, and again, see how it compares with Cura. I'm looking for something that's a little bit more advanced than Cura and more functionality and more settings. And Orca Slicer definitely has those. I also like the fact that it's being developed rather quickly. Those are my thoughts on Orca Slicer. I'm probably going to do one additional video, at least looking at the calibrations, looking at the advanced max flow rate BFA tests as well. But again, I appreciate everybody's time and I hope you have a great night. And if I don't talk to you,
I hope you have a great new year. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.